the reason for using a spiking gun and the procedure we follow is it's the safest form of identification to prove a cable is de-energised and that the worker can then proceed um, knowing that the cable is out of service or is in fact uh, not, not attached to a live source. The, the procedure itself is uh, very important as um, it's very easy to uh, visually look at cables without being sure of what they actually are and if they're energised or not. So by following this procedure you can be assured that uh, you've followed every step and um, as a backup to other forms of identification uh, you know that uh, you can safely move ahead without um, cutting through or working on high voltage cables. Prove all items are present and in good working order prior to starting work. Once the spiking gun has been checked, call the network control requesting authorisation or permission to spike the cable. Apply the appropriate and correct PPE for cable spiking duties. Install the spiking gun ensuring it fits tightly and snugly onto the cable. Install the correct charge for the size cable being spiked. Contact Network Control requesting permission to spike the cable. Clear the area and proceed to spike fire. Now contact Network Control, again advising the cable has been spiked. They will in return advise that it is clear to remove the spike gun. Upon completion, clean and replace the equipment and put back into its box. Remember to complete the logbook application. Take a rest and make sure you're refreshed for your next task.